a 15,000 seat stadium this Flinders Park and there is not a seat to be had it is jammed and that's to be expected this is a match as we've already said that is going to be widely watched throughout Australia Pat Rafter the last Australian in either the men's or women's singles left in this championships and they have such a great sports tradition here in Australia that it's important to have an Australian stay in this tournament for the sake of the tournament but Andre Agassi has other ideas and he has his fans as well. This is a best of five set round of 16 men singles match. Patrick Rafter of Australia ready to serve. First point. Point please. Ready to play. Thank you. Well, you can see the reaction right from there. They thought that one was an ace. It was called a fault. So we got boos and cheers. We got Andre signs and Patrick signs all over the place. This is going to be a contest as much in the stands as really as it is on the court. <laughs> Jumps right in and puts away the first point. 15 love. Andre Agassi is 25 years old. And he is from Las Vegas, Nevada. If you have not seen him since his haircut, his hairstyle. You still have enjoy. it. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah, he's got his do-rag on. He's got a pirate look going. Actually, Looks Raptors, like he should be on the uh, bridge of the mutiny of the bounty, in a way. And Patrick Raptor's uh, shirt is called the pajama shirt. 30 though. And uh, it's selling like hotcakes here in uh, Flinders Park. 30 love. Started out serving very well as Patrick Rafter, and he has got a game point. Birth place for him is Queensland. 49. He's got a residence in Bermuda now, but 23-year-old, uh, he spends a lot of time here in Australia, of course. Five please. Five please. Camera. So Rafter not having any trouble winning his first serve game. One game to love, first set. Well, take a break. Calling this a moderate wind. I'd sure like to be in a moderate wind all the time. It's still pretty still to me. No rain in the forecast. It has really been a spectacular day today, weather-wise, temperature-wise, and seen some outstanding tennis so far. We will fill you in on those details as this evening and this match progresses. It is Andre Agassi to start out here. As you can hear, this crowd are non-stop screamers. It's interesting because um, it was such a quiet first week for Agassi. He's played so well. I was speaking with him yesterday, and he said, you know, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a grand slam to me. Now I'm sure it does. Yeah, well, the second week, he said he's been so relaxed. And uh, the crowd down here, we mentioned this, the Five first time he's been here late. for the Australian Five Open. Minutes. He's played in the Australian indoors in Sydney. He was to have come out here last year, but had wrist surgery. 15 love. 15 love Agassi. Agassi said the first week felt like juniors. Now he says, here's where the tournament really starts. Nice ball toss there. A high ball toss on the serve, Agassi. Ah. He's had a very... Good year last year, didn't he? Won Scottsdale, Toronto. The big one was the US Open, of course, and he won a couple of others, including the Paris Indoor. Finalist in Key Biscayne as well. Number two in the world. Patrick Laughter's tactics here to try and get to the net. He is now coached by Australia's Davis Cup uh, coach, Tony Roach. He has not uh, had anything to do with Ivan Lendl. Lendl has retired now. Roach is the Australian Davis Cup coach, so looks after all the youngsters. And Roach and Newcomb certainly here. That's John Newcomb on the left of your screen. Newcomb yeah, yeah. yep. on the right, right hand side, and uh, he's with the moustache. That's the trademark of Newcomb. But uh, they have given their man instructions to try and get to the net. Of course, he cannot compete with Andre Agassi from the baseline. Agassi strokes the ball just too well for Rafter, who hasn't had anywhere near the experience that uh, Agassi has had. No one's lost a 
point on Serbia. Well, after one Manchester, he was a finalist also in Hong Kong. Had a very good year. The year before that in Indianapolis is where he really made his move, though. He beat a bunch of very, very fine players, including Pete Sampras. Finally lost to Becker in the final. Dirty love. Dirty love. One game more. He had 33 aces coming into this fourth round match, Patrick Rafter. He's got two already here. All the TV networks have been following these two lads around all day. They've followed them to the practice, they've followed them back to the hotels, wanting to know what they've done. Both players have been kind enough to do interviews because this is a big night. This is prime time down here on network television in Australia, this particular match. That's the first point one against the serve. And it was a brilliant return from Agassi that set up the point for him. And he gets in there very quick. That's a reverse angle you'll see on all the replays here from Australia. Five please. Five please. Nobody is better in the tennis business at returning second serve than Andre Agassi. If you show him a second serve, look out. He's over 60% effective on his opponent's second serve in this tournament. And we keep talking about how well Patrick Rafter has been serving. He's been broken 13 times. Agassi only three times in nine sets. Game point. Let it go, it sails long. No breaks to serve yet. Early stages, though. Best of five sets per set. 2-1 to Australia's Pat Rafter. Two games to one. Rafter of Australia leading Agassi of the USA. Agassi to serve. Patrick Rafter took out Jim Five Courier minutes. at the Newsweek Champions Five Cup last year. And as I said, he has a win over Sampras as well. It was in Cincinnati the year before. Oh. He's played Agassi officially twice. Agassi's won both of those meetings, but they did play in an exhibition longer. match prior to the start of the Australian Open. Agassi had flown in and played the next day, and Rafter beat him then. That was over in Adelaide. Oh. 30 low. Two slice backhands there from Rafter, who floated long. Face of the rackets opened a little bit too much. Rafter's backhand side is a little more consistent than the forehand. He uh, goes for both of them, but he can slice the backhand as well as come over the top of the ball. Agassi, I think, as this match progresses, will get to the forehand a little more often. Directed that one down the tee to the forehand. Forehand, clean winner. Still game point for Agassi. Great anticipation here from Rafi. You can see he's on the move. Good preparation. The racket's back minutes. before the ball bounces. He closes the face of it and snaps the wrist as he comes through. Brilliant forehand, that one. Game, Agassi. Agassi goes back to the forehand once more. Two games. Flinders Street Station in Melbourne, so if you want to head from here on by train, that's a good spot to go to. That uh, Flinders Street Station is only about a 10-minute walk from the Flinders Park Arena, and that's why uh, public transportation is the way that a lot of these folks would have been 
taking tonight. Rafter ended up 92 at 301 in the world. By the end of 93, he was 57. He is now number 21. So it's been a meteoric rise for the Australian number one. about the publicity that this has uh, got here in Australia, the Ford Australian Open. That's what it's called, but there's another car company got into the act today by supplying Pat Rafter's parents with a chauffeur-driven limousine for the time they were here to watch their son compete. But the car goes back at the weekend. <laughs> it must have been a big one because he's, yep. he's one of nine children in their family. Look how far Agassi is inside the baseline when he cranks up on this return. It's a good six feet inside the baseline as you look at this. Steps right in, gets it in the hitting zone, which is between waist and chest high, and that's where he likes it. And then he tees off. Plus, uh, Freddie was a foot or two inside the baseline when he made contact with it. Second serve. Just too well placed. I guess he was out of his power zone. But you can tell he's trying to hurt Rafter's service game, and he hasn't been able to yet. He hasn't shaken the young Aussie. Well, Rafter's got to go for the second serve. He's been given instructions. You can't just sort of roll it over and come in and hope for a, a volley because Agassi's too tough in that department. That's very, very good. But again, that's where you can get into trouble. Uh, the inexperience that Pat Rafter has had, if he presses too much, uh, could cause a couple of double faults. But at this stage, as you mentioned, he has uh, done very well on serve. A couple of nights ago, Pat Rafter over Marcus Andruska of South Africa in a match that a lot of people here called the best match they'd ever seen. <laughs> There's a lot of hype attached I do, I do to too. Rafter. Oh! But Agassi had gotten himself in trouble with the uh, with the media here because he had claimed that that was going to be a tough one for Raptor to win. He thought Andruska had a chance, and then he got he got killed in the press board. He said, "Did you see what they did to me today?" Well, the Australians are betting people, and Andre Agassi had a little wager on Andruska, and that's uh, Patrick Raptor holds on, and he leads three two. Andre Agassi and Pat Rafter in the biggest match of this Australian by far, so far in terms of interest. Three games to two, Rafter, Agassi to serve, no breaks. First set. Point, please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ready to play. Fifteen long. Rafter and Andruska will play again because Rafter, as soon as this uh, Ford Australian Open is over for him, will be heading to Durban, South Africa, with the first round of the Davis Cup. Australia versus South Africa. Oh! United States plays against France in St. Petersburg and will be there. And that will be without Andre Agassi. That will be Todd Martin and Jim Courier representing the U.S. Good chip and charge tactic there from... Rafter, but a good deep serve from Agassi. Very close to the line, that one. Mine, please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Bruno Rubeau in the chair. He's going to have a tough night to try and keep this Australian crowd quiet. By the way, Todd Martin losing earlier today badly to Yevgeny Kofelnikov in straight sets. That's why. 30-15.
well executed volley on this occasion. You look at it from Rafter's end of the court. He plays it. Good wheels from Agassi. Just couldn't control it when he got there. Point, please. Bruno Rabo has declared himself right away in this match that you know he he wants to take hold of it and keep the pace fair for both players. That's terrific control from Rafter. He was patient. Three or four hits from the baseline. And then he gets this forehand, gets in. as a tough shot there from Agassi, forcing him to play the half volley. Not an easy shot to play. Earlier today, Patrick Rafter said, this is the biggest match of my life. And he's, he's playing it very well. There you go. I think Agassi will, will really try to break down that Rafter forehand in the longer rallies. Yeah. That's what I, I think it, anyone would try to do. Yeah, I agree. I don't like Rafter winning the bulk of those baseline, baseline battles. I think that's why he tried to break that one open. Game point. Deuce. Agassi. Of course, he's a veteran of Grand Slam play now. He got to three Grand Slam finals, two with the French and one at the U.S. Open before he won his first one, which was the 92 Wimbledon. He has also won the U.S. Open. It's that forehand again. He closes the face of the racket when he goes back, so he's really got to go for it. I've done the checkers. Watch how so he closes the face and then he just doesn't get over the top of the ball. That's what causes it to go into the net, those last two. Doesn't get underneath it to get it back over the net. Game point, Agassi, second serve. First set. That last fan referring to Brooke Shields in that uh, in that placard. Of course, she's dating Andre Agassi. That's Patrick Rafter's family, part of it, in the middle of your screen. Hi, please. Patrick's mother. Thank you. Patrick's dad changed his serve uh, uh, about three or four years ago to be more like Ivan Izovich's. All of uh, Pat Rafter's brothers play. They're all good athletes. As Cliff mentioned, a large family, three sisters and five, five boys and three girls in the family. Love 15. This is where Agassi is at his best. He's just going to keep working and working on that second serve, making Raft to play 15. those low volleys and stretching to make that shot. Rafter's service percentage has gone down from uh, about 62% down to about 53% now. And uh, the first point of this all-important seventh game has gone to Agassi. Open court volley for Rafter. They said his dad, Jim, wanted to really shorten up that serve motion. That's what they did. He said, shorten it up and give it a whack, as they say down here in Australia. Well, on this occasion, he just plays a three-quarter pace serve. I think he's got to mix his serve up. That time he threw in a three-quarter pace spinner and it jumped up a little too high for Agassi. I think that's a good play here, that uh, the, the top spinner, the serve that gets up high, because on this rebound ace court, the ball does bounce a little higher, the court is a little slower than uh, the types, uh, the surface that they play on at the US Open.
30-15. That is terrific stuff from both players. An unbelievable return of serve. Great volume, though, from Raft. I like the way he's keeping this thing uh, at Agassi. A Raptor Sorry. has to serve as well as he has been serving because in his first three rounds, Agassi's opponents have lost more than half of the points at the net because of the way he attacks and, and tries to pass. So there's the single most important shot of this whole match is Patrick Raptor's serve effectiveness. At the U.S. Open, Andre Agassi, a return of serve was unbelievable. He, he broke 51 times out of 99. There it is again. No, and he's got a chance to break right here. And it's the first break point of the match so far. Oh, and again, it's the second serve. You start to press on that second serve. That one was a little short. Agassi was way in over the top of that ball. Going into this match, Agassi here was also nearly at 50%. 19 of 42 serve games he has broken. Tried to hit that one at three-quarter pace, and now he's facing a second serve. Look at the intense eyes on Agassi here. That's what I was talking about. You go for a little bit too much when you're pressed on that second serve. First break of the match goes to Agassi. Since last March, this man, Brad Gilbert, that's, his, that's Brad's wife, Kim, right uh, underneath him. He has uh, taken over the coaching duties for Andre Agassi, and it has been a remarkable effort from both those guys. And there's Gil Reyes, longtime friend and uh, uh, fitness trainer for Agassi. The big guy there on the left of your screen as we were panning down from it. Yeah, Brad Gilbert said to say hello to his son, Zach, because Zach's not out here and they miss him. Well, what a terrific shot there from Agassi. He loves a target, whether you're hitting serves at him or chipping and charging. On that occasion, it was a pretty good chip here. Down the line, look at this. Great balance as he goes with the two-fisted backhand down the line. Red, having said that he loves a target, I don't think that was a bad play from Roth. No, no an got excellent to take play, it to sure. Well, as I said earlier, we Point all said that he's not going to win from the baseline. He's got to get to the net. And that's the same sort of thing. It's the same philosophy that uh, Agassi uses on Rafter's serve, where he's trying to put Rafter under pressure, and uh, he misses a few. So Rafter's doing the same thing. He's trying to apply the pressure to the Agassi passing shot. Now, if Agassi comes up with the goods, he wins. If Rafter comes up with the serves, then he wins. 30-15. ground here both around that baseline area Rafter was inside the baseline when he thumped that forehand down the line look at this from low to high he whips that one up he used Agassi's pace of shot to make that one down the line Agassi by the way says about Brad Gilbert that you saw a little while ago he says he beat a lot of players that he shouldn't have, and I've lost to a lot of players that I shouldn't have. That's why I like him as a coach. He's got a good mind, and he does. Brad Gilbert is a great tactician. Game point here for Agassi. Game Agassi. I still feel, Fred, you correct me if if I'm wrong, because you've watched Patrick Rafter play more than me, but I still feel that there's one part of his game that he can still make more disciplined. It's his return game. 
and yeah. get more back. No, I agree. I agree. And that's why uh, I talked about the forehand, and we both have. I think Agassi again went to the forehand on that one. He's going to crack a few forehand winners, sometimes on big points, sometimes when you don't expect them. But uh, that's the Achilles heel of his game, is the return to serve. The victory at the Australian Open was something that Brad Gilbert was pushing for even before I got out of the tunnel at the US Open, says Agassi. Look at that. He got it on the line. That's a second serve. He anticipates that. He's well inside the baseline when he makes contact. Gives him a chance to come over the ball. So another second serve there. So you can see that Rafter is starting to press even in the early stages of this match, trying to go for that first serve. And he's mixed it up, and he hasn't got too many in. break in front and you at love 15 and you get a second serve you can crack it he didn't have to aim that one he just hit that one as hard as he possibly could straight down the middle of the court and it was just the pace of shot that beat rafter Though. You talk about the great return of Agassi, and he knows that, but he has got to keep going for the first serve because he can't take too much off it, otherwise Agassi is going to treat that like a second serve. 15-30. Yeah, they're going to play two on that one. The well, Cyclops machine went off, it was clearly in for... Well, Raft is lucky that they're playing two on that one. Agassi uh, struck that one. He got a let cord off the forehand down the line. Rafter wasn't even near it. First service. Five points. First, First serve. serve again. Set point for Agassi coming up. Andre the Giant there. Uh, they love their tennis down here. They love Agassi. He's got fans all over the world. He's had more media coverage down here in Australia. He's been on the front page of every newspaper since he's been here. Pat Rafter also. 1A. It's Patrick Rafter. 1A, yep. That's number four. Okay, don't even let Agassi hit it. I think that's a smart thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Easier said than done, of course. Still set point. You got another one. There's another ace. You know, you scoff at my strategy, but I think it's a really good <laughs> I love it. I love it if you can do it. <laughs> Deuce. Five aces for Rafter. Climbs all over it. Talk about the big returners of serve in the game. People like Michael Chang and and Jim Courier, but I, I don't think there's anybody better than Agassi now. I think there's, ever been. there's a lot of them, but I just think he hits the ball harder than anybody. Set point number three. Deuce. Saves another one. Some of the hype for this match today, they asked Peter McNamara, one of our great Australians, won a couple of Wimbledon titles with Paul McNamee, who's the tournament director here. He said, well, I think it's a match against one of the best volleyers in the game, being Patrick Rafter, against the hardest hitter I've ever seen in tennis. On the return, that is Andre Agassi. So you pit those two together, you're in for an exciting evening. Fault and another set point for Agassi. This is his fourth. 
Only two double faults from Pat Rafter, but both of them that come at a terrible time, and it's when he's tried to go for that second serve because he knows Agus he's going to punish it, and he's gone for a little bit extra. to Andre Agassi of the USA. Six games to three. He'll serve first game of the second set after a break. There was another Pat, Pat Cash that they used to feel this way about. Now it is Pat Rafter of Australia. Australia's number one. The last Australian left in the tournament taken on Andre Agassi. Doesn't look good for him though because as you two were saying, uh, well, they were taking a break. He played a pretty good first set and came second. 6-3, two breaks. Yeah, there was a time when you could say, well, if you hang around for a while, Agassi will... Uh go off the boil as I like to say and, and lose concentration but I think since he's been with Brad Gilbert that has changed a lot that's so very true Fred I mean, look, Agassi wants to win Grand Slam titles and basically I think the best thing Brad Gilbert has been able to say to him is look buddy you're 24 years old your best tennis is in the next couple of years you should win two Grand Slam titles in the next three, two Grand Slam titles a year for the next three years. And it, surely this is a, a takeable title for him. That serve didn't have much on it and it was quickly punished by Patrick Rafter. Look, he had plenty of time to take a full bodied swing here. Go for it and slapped it cross court for the winner. So it must feel nice that, uh, that he had a shot at Agassiz's serve there. Five points. Andre Agassi too has I mean obviously his game is still very flashy looking because he hits the ball so early and so hard but I think he has stripped everything down and that too is why he can concentrate and play these points one after another with so much intensity no nonsense and he holds on easily first game of the second set one set to love Agassi Agassi has one two Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. Only four people, Fred Perry, Don Budge, Roy Emerson, and Rod Laver, have, have won all four Grand Slams, believe it or not. Great shot there of the ball kids here at the Ford Australian Open. Normally, they're only out there on finals day, but they do such a terrific job here, and what a thrill for them to be out there to see their hero, Pat Rafter, against, I'm sure, other than some, one of their other heroes, maybe a lot of them like Agassi more than Rafter, but what a thrill for those kids to be down there to watch this part of tennis history here at the Open. I remember when I was a ball kid, I ball kid, I was a ball boy at the Australian Open for Hode and Rosewall and those boys, and then I finished up playing doubles with Ken Rosewall, winning a couple of Grand Slams. It's a great thrill, so some of those kids there will be on centre court in years to come. Andre Agassi did not go the ball boy route. He hit with Jimmy Connors by the time he was eight years old in Las Vegas and Bjorn Borg too, as a young boy. Andy Lunastasi. <laughs> yeah, he, Pat Rafter is going over very big. They like, That's all uh, there is to it. They do like paint down here on their faces. That's uh, slip, slap, slop, actually. They put a lot of zinc on because of the heat of the sun down here. Yeah, but Fred, this is a nightmare. And this is, I know, but they like to do it, whether it's day or night. They get it out there. 40-15. Pat Roth is what you call a fair dink and kind of a guy, too, Fred. Isn't yeah. he very he, solid? Here's your boy next door, as they say down under.
the first get point that Patrick Raffer was able to win on a second serve. Fan had to feel pretty good. He held for one all. And the second set for a set to Agassi. Beautiful look here at downtown Melbourne, which is uh, about a five, really about a 10 minute run and a less than five minute drive from this beautiful stadium. Cliff's been I guess running if it, it was Fred, it might you, have been, been running it. 20 minutes. No, you've been running it, and I've been driving it. <laughs> and they're both late every day. Oh, now, don't get into that. Nice touch. Boy, just strummed that volley, Agassi, because he was so close to the net. Showed, a, showed off a little bit of touch of his own. Good topspin approach there from Agassi. He doesn't come to the net very often, but uh, well-executed volley on that occasion. Well, you can see that Pat Rafter is thinking and he's trying to change his game, but that is not his game, to try and slow things down and try and roll forehands three-quarter court. Watch out. like that and then Pat Rotter really should have made the volley and didn't. Anyway, he had 40 love. He easily wins the game. 2-1. Second set. It hosts a variety of events here. Basketball, boxing, opera, motocross, rock concerts, uh, all kinds of spectaculars. 15,000 people in here. There's not a seat to be had. All of Australia is watching this live television. It, the local time is now quarter to 10, 9.45 in the evening, Monday evening in Australia. Pat Rafter and Andre Agassi Rafter to serve. Agassi leading two games to one and one set to love. Patrick Rafter's long-time girlfriend sitting there behind uh, John Newcomb and Tony Roach. The woman thousands and thousands of Aussie women hate. <laughs> he's pretty dug in. Just the return of serve, is it? He backs it up with passing shots that are equally dynamic. Well, he's so quick to get to that next shot. You know, he looks at that one and he can uh, outguess. He had plenty of time to make that shot. He could have gone both ways, back cross court or down the line. 15 all. Yeah, that's a great serve, as you said. I'm beginning to believe him. Man. I think the only, yeah. only way you can do it is by serving ace after ace. That is his. Seventh, no, sixth base. Right down the tee. Game point for the Australian. Open 
Court volley for Rafter, and he has leveled it at two games all in the second set. Agassi won the first set behind two breaks at 6-3. They are playing to get into the quarterfinal, which is worth 47,000 US dollars in change. Semi-final is worth 92,000. Runner-up will get 184,000. The winner of this Grand Slam will get 369. Thousand dollars, two hundred and nineteen, and it's equal prize money here, by the way, for the men and the women. Arancha Sanchez Vicario in 1994 made more money in one year than any woman ever had, over three million bucks. That's behind two Grand Continue. Slam titles, of course, the French and the U.S. Please, quite please. Thank you. He doesn't, uh, when he doesn't close the face of the racket on that backhand, he just tries to block that serve back. It really flies. Surface. Talk so much about the return of serve of Agassi, you lose sight of the fact that his serve has got so much more effective as well. I mean, he is putting in some Fine, and he's placing it well, too. It's just right. And it does not get the, the publicity it deserves. He doesn't often hit a lot of aces. That was his first. But you're exactly right. He's so he's become so stingy on serve Agassi. He's become a much smarter server. It's interesting to talk to him about his serve. He said uh, a few years ago that he thought he had to just have a great serve to do any good in this game. He's now got a more consistent serve, and he takes the lead in the second set. Australia is glued to this match. I hope you're enjoying it. It is the second set, 3-2, Agassi leading on serve, first set to Agassi. Just the one service break in the first set went to Andre Agassi. The service percentage is there. Agassi's got the better of it, 64 to 57%. Winners, well, they're pretty even. A lot of those from Rafter have come at the net. But look at those unforced errors. 18 from Rafter and only one from Agassi. Thank you. As Barry said, that's pretty stingy stuff when you've only made one error in a set and a half. Unforced error. Oh, that's very nice from Rafter. Agassi shows no fear either. He is playing you with such confidence. Nice little drop volley there. I'm sure that's a, a tactic that Coach Roach and Captain Newcomb have uh, passed on to the young Australian. Do you mention Tony Roach's coaching Pat Rafter now? We should mention though Nailbags, who yes. has been coaching him up to now, Bob Carmichael. Bob Carmichael uh, was on the road with Pat Rafter throughout 1994. What happened to that, Brent? Pat felt that he was, he was he was getting a little stifled by having somebody around all the time, and uh, basically that's what happened. Jim Courier is without a coach, and he's playing some of the best tennis we've seen him play in a couple of years. Hasn't yet dropped a set, in fact, in, in 1995. Call on that one. Yeah, he made it. It was called good. A uh, very tough volley for him to attempt on this one. He hits it behind him. Look at this and goes for the angle. Game point Rafter. serve against Agassi's serve. Rafter was broken twice in the first set. It hasn't been broken yet in the second. This Flinders Park Stadium court saw another great Australian, Pat, Pat Cash, play the final here in 1988. A losing effort, five sets, Mats Wielander. An epic. Epic. Point, please. Pat Cash, in fact, played here and lost very early. And Mats Wielander played here and also and lost, lost very early. 
Yeah, I think both those boys should be sharpening their game up for the 35 and over tour. Oh, I was afraid you are going to say that, Fred, but I think you're right. Well, Vilander does, in fact, play in the senior events. Pat Cash seems to think he's still got some good tennis in him. That is a terrific move, and I, I, he's got to do more of it. It's, not, it's easier said than done, because for you to get a short enough ball to be able to attack Agassi is not that easy, but watch, he does it yeah, here This well. was not a very good approach shot, but he uh, anticipated and guessed the right way. He was sitting right on top of the net. If you don't get that return back past the service line and you don't have any pace on it, then it's going to be dealt with. You're going to be on your heels for the rest of the point. Forty fifty. Pat Rofter has got so much to live up to. The great names of Australian tennis, Rod Laver, Ken Rosewall, John Newcomb, Tony Roach, Roy Emerson. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. I'm even going to include you in that. Fred Stolling. <laughs> Pat Cash. Wimbledon winner. that often from the Australian crowd when they, as you look at the photographers, when they start to cheer errors. But this is such a, a big match for Rafter that the crowd are going to play a big part if it gets very close. Although I think Andre Agassi's uh, had enough experience not to let that bother him. But it did bother Andruska the other evening when he led two sets to one against Rafter and Rafter came back and won it in five. back with Agassi. I mean, he'll tie you down and just beat up on you badly. Agassi ahead. That breaks. 4-3, second set. Agassi ahead. One set, four games to three on serve. Patrick Rafter of Australia to serve. He is, as we've said before, the lone Australian surviving in this tournament of either the women's or men's singles. It's a different story in the doubles, of course. Australians have got some very good and strong Thank doubles you. teams. Rafter to serve, trailing 3-4, and one set to love. Serving arm up doesn't let it drop like most players do in an effort to abbreviate it and hit the ball hard. It's worked well for him. Watch it. Watch how he just picks it straight up. Right there. Well, this is where it all happened. 
pretty much in the first set. Agassi broke Rafter to lead 4-3. It's a great serve again. Big difference when you get that first delivery in. 40-50. Pat Cash played serve and volley tennis, but it was his volley game that was so good. His serve was never this big, was no, it? No, no, it wasn't. Keeping that to serve at around about 100 miles an hour. Four get seven aces for Rafter for the match. He's picked his service percentage up in this set at 68% in this uh, second set. That's pretty darn good serving. Right, man, ready to play. that one wide. I can remember, Fred, that you keep the score a couple of 30 all games here on Agassi serve. He has not certainly yeah, no. faced a break point yet in this match. So Agassi has dominated on his own serve, hasn't he? Well, to the extent that when he gets his first serve in, Cliff, he's won 100% he's won of the points in this set. He hasn't lost a point when he's got oh. his first serve in in this set. is again we talk about how uh, the serve doesn't get enough publicity he's only lost one point on his first serve in this match and this is exactly how he won the u.s open he played shtick in the final everyone thought that shtick would have the big serving weapon and it was actually in fact who busted shtick all over the place and then held all over the place yeah it's a very underrated part of his game Big one there at 40 low, a low percentage shot. <laughs> Didn't even come close. Still game point here for Agassi. But even now, he knows that he can do that when he's up 40 low. Yeah, exactly. And he went for that, that tough one behind his back in that first set. Because he could. But that, that used to be the kind of stuff he'd, he'd play on big points. He'd play it all wrong. Volley attempted crossing shot there, and uh, Rafter misses the volley, so Agassi is in front, 5-4, and one set to low. Agassi, an easy winner of the first set. Rafter has stayed with him in the second set. Agassi leading 5-4 on serve. Agassi talks about how Rafter here in Australia is the man of the hour. He's definitely their man now. I mean, his last Australian still left in the singles event, and... He's a you know a great athlete who who plays a great serve and volley classic serve and volley game and uh, he's one of those guys that if you're not sharp on your game he's he's gonna he's gonna beat you he's gonna give you problems because he's getting the net and he's forcing you to hit you know accurate shots and uh, I think I've been hitting the ball so well though a high percentage of first serves is a key for me and uh, make sure I'm taking the offense on the ground and, and returning well and, and I've been doing all that really strong I mean we'll have the crowd behind him no doubt but I'll just pretend it's a Davis Cup match. It feels like a Davis Cup match, yeah. but Agassi, everything he talked about yesterday, Agassi, he's doing. Good. Agassi is getting in a high percentage of first serves at 60%, and every other part of his game is very forceful at the same, at the same time that he's staying very clean. Love 15. I, really, I think I thought going in, again, it was such a, a hype fest here, but I always felt that this match was going to be about one break a set, and that Agassi could take it in straights. 4-5, low 15, second set. Two breaks in the first set for Agassi. There again, a double fault, and Rafter pretty much upset with himself. It's only the third double fault, but they've all come at a very tough time for him. One was to lose the service break. Another one was to open it up for Agassi, and now he has done it again. He's down love 30, 4-5, pressure building.
first serve and Agassi hit the return about as hard as the serve came to him. Clipped the top of the net, 15-30. If that's not intimidating, what is? Set points here, two of them for Agassi. First serve hit at, uh, let's see, 175 Ks. That makes about uh, 108 miles an hour. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Thank you. Cross-court winner and Agassi is a two-set to none leader in this best of five set singles match. One break in the second set, two breaks in the first. Alex Dixon, Pat Rafter's girlfriend, not a happy spectator tonight, but that's just too Agassi good for Andre Agassi in that game. What's the return again? This is the second or third time in this game. Forcing him to half volley, which opens up the court. Rafter has to guess. He looks for the one down the line. It goes cross-court. Agassi, two sets to luck. Ready to play. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Players are ready. First point, third set. subdued have they <laughs> one way normally to quiet a crowd down is to beat your man 40 yeah man guess first game he is making it look easy today, isn't he? One game to love and two sets to love. Andre Agassi taking on Australia's Pat Rafter. <laughs> ah, dear. No, you just can't help it. One Sydney. game to love, two sets to love, Agassi. Steers that one wide. Now, I tell you, Pat Rafter played a very good second set there until... The game that Agassi broke him. Uh, Cliffy hasn't out. played uh, a bad match, Pat Rafter. The, the other man at the other end of the court, Andre Agassi, is just too tough. He's returned too well. He served better. Everything uh, in this match that Rafter's given Agassi, Agassi has been able to come up a little bit better. Point is, Fred, that uh, Pat Rafter has really got to get out of the blocks early in every serve game yeah. where he's in trouble. 15 on. 15 on. Anticipation. He figured that Agassi would get to it and stayed with the point. Fans like that one and uh, Andre Agassi, good wheels to get to that one. Pat Rafter was there, pushed it, and it stayed inside the baseline. Look at that return of serve. That was a tremendous first serve from Pat Rafter straight at the body of Andre Agassi. He saw the ball so early that he was able to meet it out in front. Watch this. Straight at the body, he sees it so early, gets it out in front, blocks it back, uses the pace of the shot, and it sets up an easy volley for him. Pat Rafter is in the top 10 in the world in the Aces department on serve. Served seven today so far. Too good. And it's the return of serve that's doing it because it was a well executed low backhand volley. But you really can't get much on that. And you've got to go cross court with it. He anticipates the cross court move, Agassi. Look at this. 
preparation. He's got that racket back before the ball bounces, and he has a choice of where he wants to go. Break point. Agassi is three of six in break point chances. Raffer hasn't had any. Second service. We went for the big second serve again. Hits the tape. Blindly. Feels like he's got to, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But he's pressing. Yeah. Oh, boy, he got very close there. It was a, a slight mishit maybe on the return from Andre Agassi. Whatever, he has the break early stage here. Two games to love. Of the third set, two sets to love. Two games to love now. Well, all of Australia was hoping for something better from Pat Rafter, but in truth, uh, Andre Agassi is the class of these two. Played on two occasions before, and uh, it was Agassi who beat Rafter 6-2, 6-4 at the Lipton Championships in uh, Miami. Prior to that, they met at Wimbledon in 1993, and Agassi won that in four sets. Rafter won the second set in a tiebreaker, and then Agassi won like six love, six one. Next up for the winner of this match will be Evgeny Kofelnikov of Russia. He played a tremendous match today against Todd Martin, the number eight seed and last year's finalist here at the Ford Australian Open. Kofelnikov looked terrific today. Todd Martin played a, a very bad match, a very flat match, but Kofelnikov has one of the most dangerous returns of serve as well. And that puts Agassi up to 40 love. Two aces. In this set. His third overall. That could be a great match, but I, I just think again, I mean, Kofelnikov can still blow hot and cold. Match to match, even set to set. Agassi doesn't do that anymore. Forty fifteen, still game point for Agassi. Also Yako Elting today won a just a very tough one for against Patrick McEnroe. And so did Aaron Christie beat Edberg. I talked to Kofelnikov after his victory today, and uh, he said that, hey, if I don't serve well against Agassi, he said, Agassi will make my serve look like hamburger meat. <laughs> oh, a good swing from Rafter. He had to stab it because he's gotten burned when he hasn't done enough of his volleys in this match. So he knew he had to give this backhand volley a real rod and really slice it hard and off the court. You got to knife him up there, as I said earlier. Opponents against Agassi in the first three rounds of this thing have gotten killed at the net. Agassi holds on and's got a three game to love lead and two sets to love in this best of five round of 16 match. That says, get well soon, Gully, and that references, and that's Andre Agassi's bag, it references Tim Gullickson and the terrible troubles that he's been having here at the Australian Open. He collapsed again and was taken to the hospital. He is going home tomorrow with his brother, Tom. Davis Cup captain. He collapsed in uh, Stockholm and cut his head badly on a glass table in his hotel room. And he collapsed again during the uh, Grand Slam Cup in Munich and was hospitalized for eight days. Now, they've done all kinds of tests, and I just talked to his brother and said, how is your brother feeling now? As you look at this replay, uh, just before this match, and he said, look, he's a heck of a lot better now, and we're going home tomorrow together. Well, Pete Sampras had uh, dinner with his coach tonight, and um, he's dedicated the match that he came through and won yesterday to uh, his coach and we, of course, the veterans of the tour, as well as all the players on the tour. He's a very popular man, Gully, and we wish him all the best. Safe trip home. Taken to Epworth Hospital about five minutes from here, and I was delighted to hear that he was able to get out of the hospital tonight. No 
clear definition on what his problem is there again you know taking uh, well, he's had a couple of strokes he's minor strokes had. is what they're calling it yeah they they know what it is and uh he's been on blood thinners and uh yeah we're all worried about Gully. we hope he takes care of himself because he's a he's a terrific guy love, love 30. 30. By the way, Nick Boletari is leaving as well, even though one of his chargers, Mary Pierce, is still very much alive at the Australian. Prior commitments is sending Nick home. Great so points here for Agassi. A whole bunch of players trying to win without their coaches here. Jim Courier's here without Jose Higueras. Another Pete. brilliant return from Agassi. Boy, he's won a lot. He hits that one down there so early, and even though you, you know it's going there, it's tough to get back. Bunch of break points now. Love 40. The second break for Agassi. He has got a major league lead. Two sets and four games to love. And this is how his serve is stacked up tonight. First serve percentages, 60%. When he gets the first serve in, 97% of the points won. That means he's lost one point on first serve, 52% on second serves. He has dominated this match. 59. I don't know what you tell a young man like Rafter about a match he's played tonight. Because he hasn't played that bad a match. And obviously we say he's not out of it, but he's down two sets to love and four love. And now it's the first opportunity he's had at 15.30 on the Agassi serve. Uh, this is exactly why you know, he is playing well, but he's just... He has been comprehensively beaten from every yeah, part everywhere. of the court by the number two player in the world. So you got to say, well, you went out there, you stuck to your game plan, you did the right thing, you came into the net, you served and volleyed, you can't stay at the baseline, so it's just a matter of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Agassi has just been too tough in every department. He's tried to slice the return of serve, he's tried to come over the return of serve as he did on this occasion. 30 all. Coach on the right of the Australian Davis Cup team, heading for Durban, South Africa, with the first round of the Davis Cup. Alex Dixon. The most hated woman in Australia. <laughs> yeah, Magus. Yeah, he's not too popular in Australia at this moment, is he? Andre Agassi is beating up on Patrick Rafter. Patrick Rafter trying to stay in the match, down five games to love and two sets to love.
when you hunt, you hunt. Yeah, I don't know what you do about that. Nothing you can do. You, uh, it's a good second yeah, serve. I mean. The tactics are right, but the result has been the same all night. Agassi's just too tough on that second serve. Love 30. But that Kafelnikov is going to test Agassi. But if he plays anything like uh, he's playing tonight, I don't see anybody beating him with the exception of Pete Sampras in the final. Of course, there's a couple of more matches to go for both of them before they get there. Sampras to play courier tomorrow night. And they will be in our feature match tomorrow. See, I don't think a serve and volleyer is going to beat Agassi on this court. I think it's got to be a courier like. Opponent. I don't think a servant volleyer can uh, do anything against returns like that. Match points for Agassi now. 15 Second serve, return winner, clean winner, and he wins the match in straight sets. I suppose Mary Carilli could say disappointing for the fans here, but was Andre Agassi good or what? He was terrific. I think the fans are, are lucky tonight to have seen that great a tennis player. Andre Agassi has now won 12 straight sets here. He's playing the brand of tennis that wins Grand Slam titles. And Cliff, the Agassi won that last set in 19 minutes, and uh, that, there's, there's three changeovers in that last set of a minute and a half, so there's been about just a terrific uh, effort from Agassi's part. Pat Rafa, I don't know what you tell him. He's a youngster that's come on the board here. He's got a lot of publicity out here in Australia, but he just got beat today. He's got a stepping stone in his career. He will remember that one. He's played well to get to this spot, but Agassi, too tough. Agassi, 6-3, 6-4, and 6-love. He's in the quarterfinal. Next up for him, Yevgeny Kofelnikov of Russia. We'll be back with more from Flinders Park after this. Andre Agassi destroyed the game, if not the spirit, of Patrick Rafter of Australia. Straight set victory for him. He is at now downstairs with Mary Carrillo. Andre, you comprehensively beat the last Aussie hope here in front of rabid fans. It must have been a, a, a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is. With the anticipation leading up to this, it's quite a, you know, nerve-wracking situation. And a situation like that can slip away. I mean, you got to go out there and you got to be uh, experienced about it and stay focused and stay on them. And even up to the last game, it, you know, every point, I was just going for every point like it, like I was playing a tiebreaker the whole match. And and I, I executed my plan uh, real well and felt like I was I'm hitting the ball strong. You showed great focus and you now play Evgeny Kafelnikov, who's a very dangerous player, not always known as a guy who can focus throughout a five-set match. Why is he so dangerous and what do you think that match will be like? Well, I think he's an extremely talented player and he's an all-court player. You know, he gets free points off his serve. He uh, can hit his backhand and forehands up the line as well as cross court. He can come to net, volleys well, and moves well. He does everything real well, you know. It's, uh, it's something that makes somebody a dangerous player. So it's going to be important for me to be on my game. I think I've played these base uh, serving volleyers, which I've been able to manipulate them pretty handily from the backcourt. But I think with uh, Kafelnikov, it'll be a little different. I'm going to have to pick up the pace of the ball and make sure that I'm uh, uh, really on my game and it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle and I, and I hope to come out all right thanks a lot Andre. you're very welcome let's go back upstairs